Oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh, had a dry throat for a second. Uh, we are back with Manga Messiah. Um, I loved seeing your reflections yesterday, Year Fives, on this one. Um, it's such a nice story of Jesus reaching out to the people who are everyone else thinks isn't important, but he loves especially. So I really love seeing your reflections there. And this guy, who is James, guessing? I always forget, you guys know. Um, he understands why Jesus led them through Samaria. So let's carry on. Many Samaritans from Sychar believed in Yeshua because of the woman's testimony, and they begged him to stay. He remained two days, and his teaching led many more to believe he really was the savior of the world. That is great. A whole village came to know Jesus just because he stopped and talked to this woman that everyone thought wasn't important. Then they headed on to Galilee, up to here. Yay, yay! Well, wow, what an emotional welcome. I guess a lot of these people were at the Passover feast in Jerusalem and saw what Rabbi did there. What are you doing with your hands, man? The disciples were coming proud of themselves, but Yeshua didn't accept praise from people. Yeshua spent more time with God the Father, and he would only, whoops, entrust himself to God alone. So these guys, they start to feel proud because they see that they're becoming famous. But Jesus knows that that sort of fame um, isn't something to become proud of, but only actually knowing God. That's the only thing to be proud of. Next story, the seashore road. Hey, did you hear when Rabbi has decided to go next? Uh-huh, the northern part of Galilee. We're going back to Capernaum. That's where Jesus was living for a while. Mm, we'll need to pass through a bunch of towns just to get there. Yeah, I think the plan is to stop at Cana and Nazareth again on the way there. Cana? That's a Yeshua turned the water into wine, his first miracle. Thanks for the recap. Cana. Lord, Lord. Pocketer, pocketer. Sometimes people would call each other Lord in the uh, Bible times in New Testament because it was like calling someone Sir or maybe a little bit higher than that. So it was a sign of respect. It wasn't just saying that they knew Jesus was God because other people would call him Lord and didn't believe in him. Whoa, Roman centurion. I always love the Romans. Who's he? Shh, he seems to be a Roman of very high rank. I, I'm a royal officer serving King Herod Antipas. This is a new King Herod, by the way, not the old one that tried to kill Jesus. I've come straight from Capernaum. Huh? Capernaum? Well, that's the town we're going, but it's still over 20 miles away and 600 feet below is an elevation. He rode straight up here without stopping. So this guy is desperate to see Jesus. He's sweating, even though the horse was the one running. The horse isn't even sweating, man. Why are you sweating? You didn't even run. Oh, Lord, I'm here to beg you with all my heart. My son is dying. Please have mercy on him. I've heard about the miraculous things you've done. Please come to Capernaum with me right now. So the Romans had their own gods. You might know some of what their names were. Um, they called them things like, they named them after the planets usually, um, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, that sort of thing. And they had um, a god for each, for different sorts of things. So Mars was the god of war. Jupiter was the king of the gods. Um, but of course, they're all false. And um, he is basically rejecting all of his gods to come and get help from Jesus. Maybe he'd even prayed to these other gods and they hadn't actually healed his son. Um, and then in desperation, he was turning to Jesus because he heard that he was a healer. So this is a pretty big deal for this Roman guy. So that's why he was rushing to come here. But King Herod Antipas is the one who put John the baptizer in prison. We don't want to be involved with him. How will Rabbi deal with this? So I think this is Andrew, right? Maybe? Um, Andrew is thinking very cautiously. He's thinking out of fear rather than out of love. And of course, sometimes we need to be wise and not take silly risks because like Jesus said to Satan, um, we don't want to test God. Uh, we don't want to try to force him to save us if we put ourselves in harm's way um, for bad reasons. But instead of living out of fear, Jesus is going to live out of love. It seems you people will never believe unless you see miraculous signs and wonders. He's doing this to test this guy's faith, to see if he actually 
um, really does believe in Jesus. Lord, please come down to our house before my son dies. There's no time for us to lose. You may return without me. Your son will live. I request him to come and he commands me to go. Is, Is he testing me? Yes, he wants me to prove I believe he can do this without even seeing it. But at this distance, I I must trust him. Thank you very much for your word. I'm going back home. So I'm not sure if this is the story that I'm thinking of, but there's a story in the New Testament in the Gospels where Jesus, uh, the Roman guy comes up to Jesus and says, "Um, I'm not worthy to have you even come into my house. I command men myself, and I know that you have authority to command these things. So if you just say the word, I believe that my son will be healed, and you don't even need to come. And Jesus said, I haven't found this sort of faith even in all of Israel with all the Jews. And this was a Roman guy who believed in Jesus with more faith than anyone else that Jesus had seen so far. Which is pretty amazing. So... um, this, uh, if that is the story that this cartoon is describing, I think the actual story in the Bible is better than um, than this cartoon version because the Roman guy doesn't say yet. But maybe that's another story. Maybe they're thinking of that later. The next day. Now, this is what the sunrise looks like today. I'm looking out the window right now. Pokada, pokada. That's probably my favorite sound effect in Manga Messiah. My master, I have wonderful news. My servants. Your son was healed. Oh, when did he get better? The fever left him yesterday afternoon at one o'clock. That was the exact time Yeshua had said to the royal officer, Your son will live. When he told them this, his whole household believed in Yeshua. So Jesus just had to say the word. Isn't that amazing? Imagine if you're feeling sick at home and I could just say to your parents, Don't worry. He's going to be healed. And then boom, instantly healed, even from me at school to you at home. Unbelievable. That's the sort of power that Jesus has over sickness and over um, darkness. So there we go, Year 5. Pretty amazing story. One of my favorites. Um, You can write uh, the same reflections. Um, I'm loving seeing your reflections. So let's keep the same basic questions because it helps me see all the stuff that you understand and helps um, other people to see what you've seen in the story as well. So everybody gets helped. Um, Let's pray quickly, and then we'll start the rest of our stuff. Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you that it is the last day of term and that we're going to have a rest now. And I pray on these holidays that you really help the kids to trust you and to have peace in you, and that they would have a good time of resting and having fun um, and recharging after all the work they've done this term. Thank you for this story in the Bible of um, how Jesus healed, even from a great distance, from far, far away. Um, Thank you that you have authority over sickness and authority over all diseases, um, and that you can heal um, whoever you want to. I pray for anyone in the class who isn't feeling well, that they would know your healing power, that you would heal them right now, that their body would start to feel better as they trust in you and put their faith in you. Thank you that you love people from all sorts of backgrounds, that you don't care if they're Jewish or not Jewish or anything, um, but you love them all and you heal everyone who comes to you for healing, um, either now or when we're in heaven. Um, So I pray for today that you would help us to get everything done that we need to and enjoy this last day. Um, And uh, thank you for your power and thank you that you love us. Um, And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good listening, Year 5. Hope you enjoyed that story. Um, I will put the questions up on the forum for you to post again. And actually, while we're just talking about it, hopefully you are going to pay attention to this. I really like, oops, highlighted too much. I really like how people are putting the title, the question or their topic in the forum. That's really good. So this is in the homeroom, by the way. You can see it says up here. So this is reflection. Whoa, reflections. Reflections on Manga Messiah, today's Friday. And same normal questions. What can we learn about God slash Jesus? What can we learn about people? Could think about the disciples at the start of the story for that question. Um, what can we pray for after this story? 
how can we apply this? Special shout out to Nancy, who answered, was one of the few, maybe the only person who answered this question. So I really like that. Let's bold these two. These are the most important ones for today. And what I was going to tell you about the forum, besides having the title as exactly what it's about, that's good. If you reply, for example, I'm going to say, um, Jesus heals anyone who, Jesus is willing to heal anyone who comes to him. Sometimes Jesus might choose not to heal that person because he has a greater plan, um, but he's willing to heal anyone who comes to him. So if I post that, if the next person replies to this last post, they're going to get this whole thing in their reply, including my bit. So it's actually best to reply just with this one right at the top. Okay, just this one. Otherwise, we're going to get huge, huge forum posts and it's going to be too big. So click on this one, please. Okay, thanks, Year 5. Um, that's it for the Devo. Post your reflections on here and the next bit of work will come up soon. Thanks, bye.